billionaires spare no expense when creating their dream homes. They have the means to create awe-inspiring and extravagant homes that are truly extraordinary. From sprawling mansions to futuristic estates, join me as we count down the 15 most amazing homes for billionaires. Number 15. Lily Safra, Villa Leopolda Located on the beautiful lagoons of the French Riviera in France, Villa Leopolda is one of the largest homes in the world. This house has always been a massive part of European history, as it was a blend of royal history and a modern touch of masterful architecture and interior design. While the home's interior hasn't been viewed by many, it's known to have antique artworks that are rare in the world. It's been owned by dozens and dozens of people over the years who have constructed, restyled, and decorated it according to their liking. This 50 acres of sprawling property offers a one-of-a-kind sea view from the terrace that overlooks the French Riviera. It also gives a glimpse of the 1,200 trees, all different varieties that surround the property. It's said that the estate employs 50 full-time workers that work tirelessly to keep the vegetation fresh and well-maintained. The outdoors also has a greenhouse for guests to relax in and multiple gardens and courtyards. From the aerial view, this home gives the glimpse at the glorious blue pool with a lounge area for leisure. The manicured hedges and well-sculpted statues give a feel of true kingly luxury. Ogden Codman was the architect who imagined this majestic property and brought it to life between 1929 and 1931. He designed the villa in a Neo-Palladian style by purchasing existing structures to create the landscape. The first pictures and artworks designed by the architect are preserved at the New England Antiquities in Boston, Massachusetts. After the Safras purchased this property, they commissioned Lorenzo Mangiardino, known for his art decorations on movie sets, to create the interior design of the property. The family also asked acclaimed designer Micah Erdogan to create the second floor bedrooms of the villa. The history here begins with royalty as the home was constructed for the Belgian King Leopold II, who bought the property for just one franc in 1902. The home was purchased for his mistress, paying her regular visits. After Leopold passed away, the mistress was evicted from the property, and the king's nephew, King Albert I, took over the property. In 1915, the property was used as a hospital to treat the injured and sick during World War I. The home was purchased by the owner of Italian auto brands Fiat and Ferrari, Giovanni Agnelli, in 1950. Later on, Edmund Safra and his wife Lily purchased the property. After Safra's tragic death, Lily was seeking a potential buyer. A real estate entrepreneur wanted to get his hands on the property, and he made several attempts to persuade Lily. After he offered her $555 million, Lily caved in. However, the 2008 economic downturn saw this entrepreneur unable to pay the more than $58 million deposit he made. When he withdrew the deposit, a battle ensued, but the French court allowed him to pay the amount. Villa Leopolda was owned by Russian billionaire Mikhail Prokhorov, who bought the mansion for $750 million in 2008, until Lily died in 2022 at the age of 87. Number 14. Lakshmi Mittal, 18 and 19 Kensington Gardens You can see 18 to 19 Kensington Gardens on the aptly named Billionaire Row in London. This Kensington Gardens is just one of the homes of Lakshmi Mittal, an Indian business magnate and chairman and CEO of the world's largest steelmaking company, Arcelor Mittal. And with credentials like that, you can rest assured that Mr. Mittal is a billionaire. Built in the 1800s, Mittal's mega mansion boasts around 55,000 square feet of space that was once two separate abodes that emerged into one. The first thing you'll notice when you pull up to Mittal's absurd home are the 20 parking spaces for all his fancy rides. The interior of the mansion has 12 bedrooms, an indoor basement pool, and even a Turkish bath for when he wants to come home from a hard day of cashing checks and counting all the zeros in his bank account. But Mittal wasn't the first rich person to own the property. Some of his predecessors include the Rothschilds, David Khalili, and Bernie Eccleston. And when Mittal does need to ask his neighbors for a cup of sugar, he's knocking on the doors of none other than Prince William and Kate Middleton. And how much does it cost to have those royal neighbors? Well, just $128 million. And that doesn't even take into account the absurd amount of money Mittal paid for the renovations and permits required to tear down the respective walls of two different homes and then combine them into one mega mansion. Number 13. Mukesh Ambani, Antilia Tower 
Mukesh Ambani has more money than he knows what to do with. In 2011, Forbes ranked him the ninth richest man in the world, with a net worth of $27 billion. In an attempt to get rid of a good chunk of that wealth, Ambani purchased the land of one of the most expensive streets in Mumbai and began constructing Antilia, a towering behemoth that will serve as the family home for his wife, three children, and 600 staff members. Yeah, that's a lot of help. In 2002, Ambani purchased the property and began working on his 400,000 square foot home. Although the house has 27 floors, it's 567 feet high with each floor boasting an incredibly high vaulted ceiling. Each floor in the complex offers something different and there are no identical floor plans. The Ambani family will occupy only the top four floors. Conveniently, there are still 23 other floors for luxuries such as parking spaces for his 168 cars, a health spa, swimming pools, a movie theater, and three spectacular hanging gardens spaced at different levels of the building. All told, the house comes with a price tag of over $1 billion. Since construction began, Antilia has drawn criticism from within India and across the world. From the top floor of the 27-story home, there are spectacular views of the Arabian Sea, as well as the slums of Mumbai sprawling on the outskirts of the Indian city. Much of this criticism has been spurred by this fact, as Ambani's impressive show of wealth seems to show a lack of empathy for the impoverished who inhabit the surrounding neighborhood. This lack of awareness seems even stranger, considering that Ambani's father was born into a poor family and he became a self-made millionaire. Number 12. Ken Griffin's Palm Beach Estate In 2021, billionaire hedge fund manager Ken Griffin finally unveiled his plans for a beachfront mansion to be built on part of his massive ocean-to-lake estate in Palm Beach, a quarter mile south of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago. With about 50,000 total square feet, including its service basement, the contemporary style house and guest house would be built on seven and a half acres of the north part of Griffin's estate. Yet that's big enough to be its own estate, and yet it's reserved for those just passing through. In all, the estate, which includes the overall lakefront property, measures more than 20 acres, making it by far the largest in Palm Beach. Griffin began assembling the property eight years prior and had spent at least $350 million on the real estate alone during that time. But for someone like Griffin, that number is just a drop in the bucket. The new residence at 60 Blossom Way would be used, at least initially, by Griffin and his family, including his mother, according to sources familiar with the project. In 2021, Griffin showed off his plans and renderings, showing that the house and guest house would have a combination of one- and two-story areas, with plenty of windows and patios facing the ocean. On the opposite side of the house, the focal point is the swimming pool that runs perpendicular to the residence. The main house has two second-floor sunset terraces facing west, of course, with the views across the coastal road that divides the property from an extensive estate owned by fellow billionaire Thomas F. Petterfry on the Intracoastal Waterway. As designed, Griffin's plan showed the overall exterior would have a neutral color palette. This features clean lines, deep roof overhangs, pergolas, and prominent vertical elements that include simple rectangular columns clad in limestone. Among the plentiful windows, the great room would soar two stories. Exterior features include the palm-lined courtyard, multiple water features, a lounge area with a fire table, shuffleboard courts, garden areas, vegetable beds, and a west lawn that could double as a sports field. Griffin's estate is far more than a home, and when all is said and done, the property will look like an exclusive resort. Number 11. Yuri Milner's Los Altos Home Now, when it comes to successful investing, you've either got the Midas touch or you don't. Yuri Milner is one of those people who knows how to strike gold in the stock market. Milner made an absolute killing on Facebook, but his reach extends far beyond Silicon Valley. In 2012, he paid $100 million for his Santa Clara County home. Instead of cutting the check himself, the mansion was bought through the LLC La Paloma property. At the time, Milner's purchase was the largest amount ever paid for a home in the U.S. Perched on a hill in Los Altos Hills, the 17-acre estate has a commanding view of the Bay Area, a place many tech billionaires already call home. But Milner's purchase left many people scratching their heads because despite shelling out $100 million, the home was on the market for just $50 million. So did Milner pay too much for this lavishly appointed mansion? Well, yes and no. $100 million smackaroos meant a big property tax break for Milner, about $600,000 in taxes instead of $1.2 million. His Los Altos Hills home is one of the largest in Silicon Valley. It's a 25,500 square foot mansion that features a ballroom, game room, maids room, library, two dining rooms, an indoor pool, sauna and spa, two three-car garages, a car wash, tennis courts, and 14 bathrooms. 
There's also a 4,600-square-foot guest home, but Milner has made plenty of winning bets in his day, having invested in other tech companies like Alibaba, Airbnb, and even Twitter. So while he did pay 100% over his Los Altos home's asking price, chances are he made all that money back in no time. And his presence in the neighborhood alone drove up the average property value almost immediately. So by the time he's ready to sell, the tech billionaire can look forward to earning that investment back, and then some, probably. Number 10. Ira Rennert, Fairfield You have to ask yourself, if money wasn't an object, what would you buy? How big would your house be? Would your dream be too big? Well, in the late 1990s, billionaire Ira Rennert decided to begin construction of his own dream home, Fairfield. At 63 acres, the site for his new Fairfield generated some controversy as residents of the nearby town of Southampton complained about the project's impact on their town. But their complaints fell upon deaf ears and Rennert carried on building anyway, moving into his new home in 2004. The estate reportedly has 29 bedrooms, 39 bathrooms, its own power plant, three swimming pools, a synagogue, two courtyards, an orangery, a 164-seat home theater, a basketball court, and a bowling alley. That theater is large enough to stage even a Broadway production if they wish to play to an audience of one, and seeing as how Renard is a bit of a recluse, that may just be the case. The billionaire really isn't known for his car collection, yet the estate holds a 100-car garage. Building a 62,000-square-foot playground with amenities like this wasn't cheap, costing around $110 million. The property as a whole was valued at around $250 million by completion. By 2020, the numbers went up to half a billion dollars. It's estimated Renard is worth about $4 billion, and while he could have easily afforded to pay for the project from his own pocket, he did find himself in court to defend the funding of this Long Island estate. Representatives of a now-defunct mining business he used to own claimed he looted the company to realize his Fairfield vision. In February of 2028, Rennert was ordered to pay about $118 million in damages. It seems that the sheer level of luxury available in Fairfield is matched only by the controversy behind its action. With each addition to the already palatial home, the man has been at odds with his neighbors, many of whom would prefer he never built Fairfield at all. Number 9. Larry Ellison, The Gemini Mansion one of the most expensive homes listed for sale in the United States, South Florida's sprawling Gemini Mansion was bought by Larry Ellison in 2020 for a record-breaking $173 million. That price point makes the palatial oceanfront property the priciest home to ever sell in the state of Florida. It also makes it the third most expensive home ever sold in the U.S. Ellison went around real estate agents and purchased the former Ziff family estate in an off-market deal from fellow billionaire Jim Clark. Clark had owned the home for just a year, having paid over $94 million for it. This Gemini mansion comes with 16 acres of ocean-facing land, a park-like botanical oasis, a total of 33 bedrooms and 85,000 square feet of living space, a PGA-standard golf practice area, a sports complex, bird and butterfly gardens, and a lot more amenities than any one human could possibly need. But he didn't just get the building in the sale. Clark was nice enough to throw in the nearby Bird Island, which brings the total up to more than 22 acres of land. The property set on a barrier island in Manalapan, just south of South Beach. The Ziff Estate spans the width of the barrier island, roughly 1,200 feet of frontage on the Atlantic Ocean, and about 1,300 feet on the intercoastal waterway. With a 12-bedroom main residence, a 7-bedroom guest house, north and south ocean cottages, and dedicated spaces for the estate manager's home and office, the Gemini Mansion is a true private oasis. The mansion's history dates back to the 1940s when it served as a home to Gloria Guinness, a socialite and fashion icon known for her high-profile marriages. It was later owned by the Ziff family, which consistently ranked as one of the wealthiest families in the U.S. year after year. The publishing magnates held on to the property for decades, a time in which the property came to be known as the Ziff family estate. The Ziff family tried to sell the home for $195 million, a price point that made the Gemini Mansion the most expensive listing in the U.S. at the time, but that failed to attract any interested buyers. It wasn't until 2021 that Netscape founder Jim Clark made the $94 million deal, an absolute steal considering he saved $100 million. But Clark says he and his wife bought it on impulse and hardly spent any time there, prompting them to allow Ellison to take it off their hands and profit another $80 million. Number 8. Jeff Green, Palazzo di Amore Palace of Love in Italian, the Palazzo di Amore was a nearly eight-year labor of love for real estate investor Jeff Green. 
This 25-acre Beverly Hills compound's namesake is also a nod to Green's 2007 nuptials to wife Mate C. Green, a grand gesture by a self-made real estate entrepreneur who owns more than 30 properties in Florida, 3,500 apartments in Los Angeles, and three buildings in downtown Manhattan. The things we do for love. Well, romance oozes from this palatial Mediterranean-style villa with lovely features like a floating glass floor walkway over pools lined with mature olive trees, a sweeping double stairway, and a vineyard reminiscent of Tuscany. Green says he wanted to create a place for the modern era by setting the highest standards of craftsmanship and artistry in every detail, from employing an absurd 17-step painting process with antiquing to importing 70-year-old olive trees. Well, I guess he succeeded. Guests must first enter through not one, not two, but three sets of grand double gates and approach the estate by a, a quarter-mile long tree-lined drive. A marble two-story skylit entry eventually greets them, along with graceful twin-curving staircases and beautiful architectural details, limestone floors with marble and maple inlay, hand-painted ceilings, and paneling of maple burl wood. The living room, dining room, breakfast room, game room, office, and family room all open onto the manicured grounds. The outdoor entertaining areas include a striking 128-foot scenic reflecting pool and fountain. The recreational facilities include a swimming pool, of course, a spa, an outdoor barbecue area, and a tennis court. The main floor of the residence boasts a grand chef's kitchen replete with classically styled cabinetry and a commercially sized walk-in refridge. It's complemented by a second staff kitchen, a fully equipped butler's pantry, two staff rooms, a three-car attached garage, and a suite of two private offices with separate entry. The wine cellar on the main floor holds 3,000 bottles, and a tasting room provides a stately setting to savor the estate's private label, Beverly Hills Vineyards, which produces 500 casks of wine a year. There is plenty to fall in love with at the Palazzo di Amore. Number 7. Renat Akhmetov, Villa Las Cedras Villa Las Cedras is owned by Renat Akhmetov, known as Ukraine's richest man. He owns System Capital Management Group and has a net worth of $5.8 billion and bought this villa for $221 million in 2019. The house is a whopping 18,000 square feet in size and comes with 14 bedrooms, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, a wood-paneled library holding 3,000 books on flora and naturalism, including a 1640 edition of a botanical codex, plus a man-made pond with Amazonian lily pads, a brown statue of Athena, a chandelier-lit ballroom, a stable big enough for 30 horses, grand sitting rooms, 19th century portraits in ornate frames, and stunning woodwork throughout. The cedar, palm, and olive trees are by themselves worth a fortune. Besides its many luxuries, its very location off the coast of St. Jean Cap Ferrat speaks volumes of its grandiosity. Its highest vantage points boast views of Villefranche sur Mer, the viaduct bridge near the medieval town of Etze village, and far to the east, the breathtaking Alps separating France and Italy. St. Jean Cap Ferrat has been a popular vacation destination for many prominent people in history, from Charlie Chaplin and Elizabeth Taylor to Winston Churchill, and Akhmetov was ready to add his name to the roster. Villa Las Cedras is truly fit for a king, because it was built for the king of Belgium back in 1830. Its light salmon and sand color speaks of this dynasty, for the shades were influenced by the Kingdom of Sardinia that ruled St. Jean Cap Ferrat at the time. Twenty years after it was built, the mayor of Villefranche-sur-Mer bought the home to run it as an olive tree farm. Even today, the Villa de Cedras has olive trees, each more than 300 years old on its grounds. In 1904, the world's most expensive home changed hands once again when the mayor's descendants sold it to Belgian King Leopold II. He, of course, expanded the gardens that surround the home. Number 6. Petra Eccleston, The Manor well, she may not be a household name, but British heiress, model, fashion designer, and socialite Petra Eccleston is one of the richest people alive today, with a net worth of about $400 million. Her father is a Formula One mogul, Bernie Eccleston, and her mother is supermodel Slavica Eccleston, which explains all the money. But with that kind of cash comes a pretty extravagant home. Eccleston purchased this amazing $150 million mansion located in Los Angeles, which is reportedly one of the most expensive houses in the U.S. Her 56,000-square-foot residence is bigger than the White House, and it's close to Rodeo Drive, has 14 bedrooms, but more than 100 rooms in total, 27 bathrooms, and enough space to park over 100 cars. It makes it one of the most insane celebrity homes on Earth, without a doubt. A home like this certainly begs the question, is it worth it? And the short answer is probably yes, especially because her home is simply known as The Manor. 
It isn't just the largest home in LA, but it's the former residents of Candy and Aaron Spelling who were California royalty in their own right. Number 5. Stephen T. Huff, Pensmore Mansion Located in the Ozark Mountains of Missouri, the Pensmore Mansion is one of the largest homes in the country at 72,000 square feet. Standing five stories tall, it holds 14 bathrooms and 13 bedrooms, and with exterior walls of about a foot thick, it's built to withstand even the nastiest of earthquakes. In fact, the Pensmore Mansion can allegedly even hold up against other natural disasters like EF5 tornadoes and even man-made mayhem like bullet fire and bomb blasts. Why someone would want to wage war against this palatial home is anybody's guess, but it is quite impressive nevertheless, and perhaps one of the few homes capable of surviving the apocalypse thanks to the reinforced sustainable concrete. This giant home is owned by none other than Stephen T. Huff, an American astrophysicist, inventor, and philanthropist with an incredibly impressive resume. A former employee of the United States Army and CIA, Huff founded multiple defense and intelligence companies, which he would eventually sell to amass about $80 billion in assets. In 2015, Huff went on the record stating his mansion in the Ozark should stand for the next 2,000 years, and when you're as rich as this man is, maybe you can afford the technology to keep you alive for that long. Construction finally wrapped up in 2016 after an eight-year endeavor, and Huff purposefully built Pensmore in an area not subject to government building inspections or regulations, meaning he gave himself carte blanche to do quite literally whatever he wanted, hence the bulletproof walls. But when you have a house such as this, conspiracy theories will abound. Many online pseudo-sleuths believe that Pensmore Mansion is used to house state-of-the-art defense systems, while others believe it's just one entryway to a series of underground tunnels spanning the North American continent that the Illuminati plan to use in case of a world-ending war. While some conspiracy theories are certainly fun to play with, odds are that the Pensmore home is just a massive project of an eccentric billionaire. Number 4. Jay-Z and Beyoncé's Bel Air Home Perhaps one of the most famous celebrity couples of all time, Beyoncé and Jay-Z are no strangers to opulent living. Their Bel Air property spans over 1.8 acres. The highlights of the house's interior include eight spacious bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and a home theater. As one steps into the property, the windowed walls provide a gorgeous view from the inside. The windows open out to trees and tropical plants with a glimpse of the beach. The property's exterior was built with a garage that can accommodate up to 15 cars and a basketball court and four pools, including a stunning glass rooftop infinity pool. The sprawling garden has neatly sculpted shrubs and offers a closer view of the beach. The floors are a combination of dark hardwood, patio furniture, and shades of gray surrounding the glass infinity rooftop pool, and the fireplace completes the outdoor look. The living room features gray carpets with contrasting whitewashed walls, in addition glass panels, a giant piano, and a teal blue velvet couch with metallic blue frames adds an exquisite touch to the interior. The family room has hardwood floors that go well with cream-colored curtains and an abstract rug in shades of yellow, blue, and beige. A comfy taupe couch and large marble fireplace also adorn the space. There are numerous eccentric art pieces around the house by famous artists, too. The exterior features an extremely long limestone driveway with massive iron gates separating the property from the world. A wooden terrace overlooks the entire property. The backyard has ceramic tiles with glossy black marble walls, and the floor has grand taupe-colored stone detailing. Large windows also span across the area to brighten the home on sunny days. An outdoor kitchen with burnt brown high chairs and a tiki bar is an excellent spot for barbecues, too. Apart from all these incredible features, the gigantic house also has room for basketball and tennis courts. This mansion was originally listed for $135 million, but Beyonce and Jay-Z made the winning $88 million offer. After acquiring the house, the couple set up several upgrades, including a $750,000 living space below the pool and, of course, a backup generator. Further, they added bulletproof windows and state-of-the-art security. Number 3. Stanley Kroenke Broken O Ranch It was only a matter of time before a cash-flush investor bought the Broken O Ranch. Asking $132.5 million in cold hard cash, the 124,000-acre Montana farm is one of the largest agricultural operations in the Rocky Mountain West, offering an alluring investment opportunity to those bullish on soft commodities. Turns out, one American billionaire agrees. Stanley Kroenke, a real estate mogul worth $4 billion, assumed ownership of the Broken O Ranch for an undisclosed price. 
Kroenke, known for his ownership of sports teams like the NBA's Denver Nuggets and the NFL's St. Louis Rams, is believed to have plunked down nine figures for the property. Prior to his purchase, Kroenke's personal portfolio held an estimated 740,000 acres worth of U.S. real estate, making him the 10th largest landowner in America. With the addition of Broken O's 124,000 acres, he's now the eighth largest in the country, eclipsing the Reed and Pingree family's land holdings. At 864,000 acres, his holdings still trail million-plus acre owners like John Malone, Brad Kelly, and Ted Turner. Located near Augusta, Broken O took nearly 25 years to assemble, resulting in massive property that stretches 20 miles along the Sun River and spans three counties. It's the largest irrigated farm in the state of Montana, boasting extensive water rights. Annually, it produces 700,000 bushels of small grain crops and 25,000 tons of alfalfa hay. One of the top commercial cattle operations in the Rocky Mountains, livestock includes 3,500 mother cows, 800 replacement heifers, and 175 range bulls. The ranch was being marketed as turnkey, meaning everything from machinery to staff to business arrangements would pass on to the new owner intact. In addition to its agricultural capacity, Broken O boasts a few luxury amenities its new billionaire owner will surely like. There's a 10,000 square foot main house that overlooks the river and the Rocky Mountains. It's got an indoor swimming pool too. Recreational activities on the sprawling compound also include trout fishing, hunting, and wildlife viewing. Number 2. Bill Gates, Xanadu 2.0 Bill Gates had been passionate about software programming from a young age and often found bugs and automated systems in high school with his childhood friend Paul Allen. In 1985, the duo launched the first version of Microsoft Windows and went public a year later. His net worth jumped to $350 million, and within a year, Gates had become a billionaire at 31. Even after stepping down from the day-to-day -day operations and later stepping down as the chairman, he remains on the top five list of the wealthiest people in the world. Gates has a massive net worth of $118 billion, and while he's cut down on his expenses in recent years, his biggest purchase remains the Seattle mansion worth $124 million. Called Xanadu 2.0 by Gates and his family, the mansion is an incredible innovation in architecture, with amenities everywhere. Let's take a look inside Bill Gates' $124 million estate. In 1988, he purchased the lakefront land for $2 million, and it took several years to build the 66,000-square-foot dream home that Gates' family wanted. He spent $63 million on constructing the home and named it Xanadu 2.0. The name refers to the luxurious home of the fictional character Charles Foster Kane in the film Citizen Kane. Bill Gates not only spent money on construction, but also bought the neighboring properties for $14 million to ensure the family had ample privacy. Xanadu 2.0 is designed with a Pacific Lodge theme in mind, as it was inspired by the materials found in the Pacific Northwest. Along with using seven types of stone, more than 500-year-old Douglas fir trees were used for construction. The estate required the labor of 300 people, out of which 100 were electricians. The interior was designed by French architect Terry Despont, an associate architect also restored the Statue of Liberty in the 1980s. The house has seven bedrooms, 24 bathrooms, and six kitchens. Each of those six kitchens is located in corners, so one's always within reach. The formal dining hall can accommodate 200 people, while a more intimate room seats 24 people close to the fireplace. Additionally, the mansion has a steam room, a sauna, and a gym that spans 25,000 square feet. As an art lover and of literature, Bill Gates has given special attention to ensuring artwork and books are displayed perfectly. Paintings are projected on a computer screen stuck to the wall to form a single frame. Gates has installed a 2,100-square-foot library with a reading dome with a quote from the Great Gatsby novel, and this also holds the Codex Lester by Leonardo da Vinci, which Gates purchased for about $30 million in an auction. Number 1. Oprah, The Promised Land Many of the rich and famous tend to flock to Santa Barbara, California's Montecito County, for its secluded neighborhoods, beachfront property, and good wine. There is a real who's who calling this place home, but then there's one Montecito resident who really stands above the rest, Oprah Winfrey. The queen of all media has houses in several different places, including Chicago, New Jersey, Hawaii, Antigua, Florida, and Colorado, but she calls the promised land her Montecito abode home. Oprah reportedly paid $52 million for her home and then spent hundreds of thousands more on decorating, redecorating, and renovating. The promised land home seems to have gone through as many changes, at least on the inside, since Oprah bought it and its exterior since the original property owners started building on the land around 1912. The home as it stands now was built in 1959, with several additions along the way. 
It's now worth almost $88 million, with a 2012 tax bill of $904,000. The property is also riddled with rose bushes. The climate in Montecito is perfect for gardening, and so naturally Oprah's personal rosarian has cultivated seven different strains of roses, including one developed specifically for her. Named The Legends, the rose honors the influential African-American women she'd previously honored at her Legends Ball. But what does it look like when you actually enter the promised land? Well, six bedrooms, 14 bathrooms, 10 fireplaces, a gourmet kitchen, pro chefs, an indoor-outdoor theater, a wine cellar, a barn, ponds, and orchards, a tennis court, a man-made lake stocked with fish, an outdoor entertainment area, oh yeah, and a huge guest house with a pool, which has seen some royal guests in recent years. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge. Top 5 Show has launched channel memberships. Thank you to our channel members.